Good evening, everybody. Hi. Sorry, we're running a little behind schedule, but welcome to the regular meeting of the Foxborough School Committee. It is June 17th. Uh, 2019 it is 7 6 p.m. so I apologize for the delay we have a lot going on um, let me go through our agenda and then we will get going uh, we started our meeting with an executive session at 6 15 uh, for the purpose of wage wage contract negotiations with non-union personnel the superintendent and union personnel Foxborough Education Association professionals and Foxborough Education Association educational assistants uh, at 7 p.m., we're recognizing visitors. 7.05 p.m., recognition of retirees. 7.20 p.m., we have a great teaching and learning highlight tonight, the Burrell Elementary School 4th Grade Recycling Club, club <clears throat> with Ms. Rita Greeley, Ms. Darlene Reed, and some great Burrell Elementary School students. Uh, at 7.40, we're going to introduce our new middle school assistant principal, Dr. Timothy Frazier. At 7.50, we're going to vote on the proposed FY20 to FY22 Foxborough Education Association Professionals Collective Bargaining Agreement. At 7.55, we will vote on the proposed FY20 to FY22 Foxborough Education Association Educational Assistance Collective Bargaining Agreement. At 8 o'clock, we will get to approval of minutes, 8.05. We will vote on the proposed elementary report card changes as a result of the pre-K through 12 mathematics curriculum review, and Dr. Mello will help us with that. At 8.15, we're going to dis have a report on progress for our 2017 to 2020 strategic plan with Dr. Berdos and Dr. Mello. At 8.35, we will be reviewing the progress on the 2017 to 2020 technology plan also with Dr. Berdos and Dr. Mello. At 8.55 p.m., uh, we will continue discussion on the superintendent's evaluation process. At 9, we have acceptance of donations from the Foxborough Diamond Club, the FHS Softball Boosters, and the Taylor School PTO. At 9.05, if anyone's still awake, we're going to talk about <laughs> upcoming policy revisions uh, for policies BEDH, -E public participation at school committee meetings, and JFABD, homeless students enrollments, rights, and services. Then we will move on to other matters. Okay. Yes, and so <laughs> after the teaching and learning highlight, I want the, our students to know you do not have to stay for all of this because, you know, you have your big last day of school tomorrow and you'll want to go home and get some rest for that. So after, we do, after you do your part, you can quietly go. Um, it's uh, it being 710, we're running behind. Do we have any visitors who wish to be heard tonight? Okay. Seeing none, we're going to move on to... A wonderful part of our night, both bitter and sweet. Sweet for the retirees, yes. bitter for us. Um, we have 15 retirees from Foxborough Public School this year. And Dr. Berdos, you want to lead us in? Sure. Mm. So um, alphabetically here, <laughs> our, our first retiree is um, Mrs. Sue Abrams, the principal at the Ahern Middle School. And she has been the captain of that ship for 20 years, I think. Yes. And um, then we have Betsy O'Coin, who's been the fabulous wellness teacher at the elementary level. <clears throat> 27 years of service. Did you want me to go through it? Or am I stealing no. your thunder? No, I just okay. read that whole agenda, so I'm going to okay. let you introduce our retirees. <laughs> no one wants to hear that much um, from me. Nancy Bailing, who was our family <laughs> consumer science teacher here at the high school with 33 years, uh, I'm sorry, 10 years of service. And then Roseanne Breen, a reading specialist at the Ahern Middle School with 33 years of service. Can you see how these, these years already are just quite amazing? <clears throat> um, Rosemary Burrows, an educational assistant at the IGO with 18 years of service. Kevin Corliss with, um, with the athletic maintenance, <clears throat> 36 years of service. Uh, Lisa Duffy. Um, one of our fabulous bus drivers with 19 years of service. Linda Flaherty um, at the high school, in the assistant cook for 19 years of service as well. Mary Hayes, grade six, ELA in social studies at the Ahern, 20, uh, 34 years of service. 
And then also a partner there in grade six, ELA Social Studies at the Hearn with 24 years of service, Gloria Lehan. Earl Marino, custodian retired back in the fall. He's back there <laughs> waving his hand right out there. I see him walking daily, I will say that out there. And he's enjoying his walk. <laughs> um, 25 years of service at the borough. Nancy Murray, one of our educational assistants, um, retired from the high school with 18 years of service. Donna Severs at, Severs at 19 years of service here at the high school with our food service department as well. Shelly Wainrib, kindergarten teacher at the borough with 27 years of service. And Judy Wivel, food service here at the high school again and 19 years of service. They must really like it here in Foxborough, but they must be really happy to retire. We're, it is bittersweet. It is. So that totals, if anyone was counting, 348 collective years of taking care of our students, getting them safely to school, feeding them, teaching them, cleaning up after them, and disciplining them. So <laughs> thank you for all of that. Yes. Actually, yeah. I know we could keep applauding you all all night. We have a gift for you, and uh, what we have done in the past is we would all like to shake your hands or hug you. Um, if you could come around the table uh, in order, I guess, and just go around the outside, um, we'll, we'll greet you all, and Janet will give you your gift. Just, just don't trip on the yeah, cord. Watch out for the cord over that, here. That's here. Or my foot. Come on, Sue. So come on up. Okay. <laughs>
I am so proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank you. She watches me walking out there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they watch you. Where's she going? Have a day. I know you got to go. Thank you. Time for that. Dance some rock. Right, that's the secret. I didn't know they were going to be here. I know. I know. These two are my two. I know. 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 I but you really have no, you know, you can't really want to, want to, you want to, what a fortunate year. We really year. are. We really are. We're, it's, you know, it's hard to settle down and have the rest of our meeting now. I feel like it's a party Enjoy. here, but... Do we have kids? <laughs> but we're, we are going to move on. Thank goodness for the kids. Really is the best part of our meeting. Seriously. And now let's dive into policy. Yeah, that's right. Oh. <laughs> There's that. Oh, let's save the vegetables for last. Dessert first. Look at how happy they are to see them. I know. You're going to be up there next. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, everybody for coming tonight. <laughs> I, I might. I, I, I don't really want to gavel them if I don't have to, but I'm going to have to. All right. We, we do need to move on to the next part of our agenda. Thank you all the retirees. We really, really appreciate everything you have done for us and enjoy your next steps. Okay. Dr. Berdos, we're going to move on to our teaching and learning highlight. Would you like to talk us in I and would, introduce I everybody? I would love to introduce our wonderful fourth graders from the borough, and uh, Mrs. Rita Greeley and Miss Darlene Reed, who are there, are here with them for their fourth grade recycling club. And I have to say that I'm really, really excited about what you've done and what you're going to talk to us about. Because at the beginning of the school year, I talked with some of you, if you remember, and we talked about what are the things that you thought that we could improve on. And this was one of the things that you talked about when we talked way back. And to already see within the same school year that you are on it. So I will turn it over to Mrs. Greeley and Mrs. Reed, and then we'll go through and have you introduce yourselves and what you're going to share with us about your recycling club. Do you want to come a little closer so to the microphone yeah, so that the camera the can see you all and they can hear you at home? So much for having us speak tonight. We're very excited. The, the students were very excited to even think that they would be coming here tonight. Um, to you know, they have a they've had a mission uh, to skip the straw, and they've really worked very hard throughout it. Um, so first, I'd like them all to introduce. These are a group of fourth graders um, at the Borough School. So uh, Maddie, why don't you introduce, and then we'll go down. Just your name. My name is Maddie. I'm Ryan. I'm Callie. I'm Evelyn. I'm Shaylin. I'm Rebecca. I'm Grace. I'm Isabella. Okay. Welcome to all of you. Yes. 
So first I'd like to talk about how this all started. And um, it always seems like it starts with something having to do with reading. <laughs> so, and it did. It started with an article out of StoryWorks. And the article that um, Karen Washburn, the fourth grade teacher, had introduced to her class one day back in, I believe it was March, was um, should plastic straws be banned? And it, um, the, the students all read about, uh, read this article and read the pros and cons. Should it be banned or not? And um, you can imagine that a lively discussion ensued. There was a lot of really good information in here, some hard facts that was really amazing to these students, uh, many of whom are naturalists and they love animals. Um, so it really, they took it to heart and became very interested, at which point during the discussion I walked in because I'm a reading specialist. And as I was walking in, uh, Mrs. Washburn was like, Mrs. Greeley, you know, you're passionate about recycling, so you're going to want to know about this. And so the students all told me about this. And of course, I had to share with them how I really wanted to get some recycling going on in the building. A couple of weeks later, Dr. Burdos is walking through, the visiting the Barrel School, comes to the grade four classrooms and starts interviewing or talking to the students. And I believe it was you, Shay, that had mentioned about this, the skip the straw, um, your concern for the animals and the environment. And that's how it all got started. <coughs> Most important to um, Mrs. Reed and myself, is the importance of the fact that their voice matters. They shared a concern, and I love that it took them someplace. It started something, and we no longer have plastic straws. Well, I can't say that. We don't have them out in the cafeteria anymore. If one or two students do need to have one, um, they'll ask for one mm -hmm. and they, they'll be given, or they, they may be having some paper straws coming in. But basically, students are drinking their milks and juice just straight out of the carton, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it was a small movement, but they all did that. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you're going to be seeing tonight is some of their creativity at work. There's some incredible teamwork. Um, we started out with 30 students who were interested. We ended up with 10 students who rose to the occasion. And these students never once, the, the thing is that they had, to they had to miss the recess, mm -hmm. which isn't an easy thing to do for, for students in the elementary level. They, they, didn't, they didn't stop. They never once said, I don't think I want to stay with this. They were so engaged and they worked beautifully together. And really what we wanted it to be was student directed with you know, us kind of leading from the back background and they were amazing and that's what, you, what I believe you're gonna be seeing tonight. Um, and we also have some PSAs if you'd like to see them. Sure. Um, before we get started, would anybody like to share, they did come with um, a little message that they would like to share. Would anybody be wanting, Isabella, why don't you start? Oh. People don't know that people are polluting the ocean with plastic and trash. People also are hurting animals by the trash, and those two things can harm the world, especially the animals. But this is about plastic straws. It's a type of plastic that is tiny but can choke animals. Plastic straws can be at zoos, restaurants, shops, cafes, hotels, and more. I always love dolphins and sea animals. But if you didn't know, a s one single plastic straw can choke a lot of sea animals. This is why you should skip the straw. Very good. Okay, Grace. Um, I stuck with the club because whether we like it or not, most of the problems on Earth are humans' faults. Mm -hmm. Poaching, pollution, and overhunting. And I feel guilty for these things, even though I'm not the one who is personally doing them. Plastic straws is a small step, but I strongly believe that this small movement is a significant making of a significant movement and it will make this world, our sanctuary, a better place. 
Okay. Um, I made PowerPoints on animals and I did one on endangered animals. I saw how many extinct animals or all about to. I want oh, it was I didn't really <laughs> like it. it was, Sad. Yeah. Um also I want this world to go on for many more years. Plastic straws is one thing that would chip away from the environment and wildlife. Switching to paper straws or a cy or a recyclable can do a whole lot of help our environment. Mm -hmm. Jalen, I saw you again. Um, well, when I think about the club in general, I mostly just try to think of the reason that we're doing the club, not just the fact that I'm in the club. And even just like watching videos and learning about things that humans have already done with <coughs> just with plastic straws, not even including um, paper cups, um, well, not paper cups, plastic cups, um, plastic utensils, many other things, especially plastic bags. I mainly just try to, I've tried to focus down on the whole reason. And like in the end, it's just the whole reason is us. Because we are on this earth, that's why these animals are getting hurt. Anything, anybody else want to share? Okay. Everyone. Plastic straws are a small part of the world, but it has a big impact. I, al I have always been fascinated with marine life, especially <coughs> turtles. And, they're the, and they mainly get hurt by plastic straws. Ti a tiny little plastic straw can kill thousands of animals in one year. So you should ban straws to save the, er save the environment before we destroy it because we created all of this, all of this harmful har harm to the environment. <laughs> Maddie, did you want to? Okay, that's fine. Okay, so any questions before we move on? I'm just so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> They're passionate. Yeah. And it makes me feel really good about um, they're moving on to the Ahern School and also to the high school and, and all the possibilities um, because I know there's so many possibilities up at the, at the Ahern and their voice will have more impact. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm quite um, proud of these, of these students. Uh, we are missing two. There are ten of them all together. But I think at this point it would be great to see what, um, what did happen during the, our meetings. Yeah, yeah. so the um, students in the, the club worked together to create three public service announcements which were actually broadcast throughout the school. Um, and posted on um, the borough website as well to kind of spread the word. But before we show you those, we wanted to show you just a quick little video clip that um, gives you a little window into <laughs> what went into creating these videos. And what she's pulling that up, Mrs. Reed, for those that may not know or at home, is our technology integration specialist mm -hmm. for the three elementary schools. <laughs> I know. I know. Where is the boy? Where is the boy? You said 
that? He said, where's the boy? Where's the boy? To be continued. Where's the boy? That's our next move. That's where we are going to be going next year. So now what we'd like to do is share the actual public um, uh, the PSAs, public service announcements. Yes, so we had um, we had a pledge day. Um, it was it was June third. So leading up to that pledge day that occurred for throughout the school, all grade levels during their um, lunch um, time. Um, we played one of these videos each day leading mm -hmm. up to it so that the students would kind of understand the importance of what, what they were, you know, going to be pledging. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, audience. Today we would like to inform you about plastic straws and the impact of what they do to the animals in the ocean. Americans throw half a billion plastic straws a day. This causes an estimate of 1 million sea animals killed each year. How does this kill them, you ask? When straws are thrown away, they are light enough that many of them blow away right out of the trash and end up in our open. Then the sea animals eat the, eat the straws thinking it is food, and it, then it chokes them. Poor, poor sea animals, we need your help, and so do the sea animals. If you want to make a difference, you can start today by skipping the straw. So let's think about this for our school students. Do you really need a straw while you're drinking your strawberry milk? If you think you can do without a straw, then help us spread the word. Skip the straw. <laughs> <laughs> by themselves. Yeah. Um, you saw in the um, first video, they work together in, as teams, 
it was totally student directed. It, it was amazing to watch. Um, and it was it made us our job so easy. <laughs> they were they were great. So um, yeah. So did, and students, do you have anything else that you would like to share? Yes, Isabel. Uh, I just wanted to say, whenever I'm in the meetings during lunch and recess, I don't think about recess because I'm having fun, mm -hmm. knowing that I'm helping the sea animals every day right. in the club. And I, I actually would like to um, point out that <coughs> Isabella created, um, she had written up an announcement, so she kicked off the whole um, week with her announcement, which was really um, strong, and uh, she was on the intercom, and she just spread the word. It was a great way to kick off the whole project. And then each day after that, the students all saw um, uh, saw the PSAs and then posters were made and the kids were wearing badges so we they did definitely um, get their goal um, they, they met their goal to spread the word so they did great and I saw one more hand was that yours Grace? Um, yeah I noticed that like I was going grocery shopping with my parents and my dad got a drink and when he put in his straw he said, oh look, this straw is biodegradable. And I'm like, really? And like, that's really shows that like, it's actually working. Like, mm -hmm. people are realizing the danger that plastic straws are doing mm -hmm. to animals. That's right, and we're much more aware. We're much more aware of those straws. Um, and so we, we need to keep that consciousness uh, and that awareness going. So, did we have one more uh, video or was there? We have the video of the actual pledge. The and then pledge. The Would, do we have time for that? Sure. And then, okay. So this is um, a video during one of the lunches where um, club members were leading, um, I think this is first graders okay. through the pledge. I'm oh, they, you, it might be the kindergartners. Now. And that was a banner that we had um, students in the building um, after the pledge, they all signed their name that they were going mm -hmm. to try really hard to skip the straw. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 The biggest of pledging to the straw. Please raise your right hand. Skip the straw pledge. On my honor, on my honor, I will try my very best. I will try. to the school committee and you'll all think twice when you see a plastic straw. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. all right. uh, does anyone have any questions for our guests? No? Well, I will say my favorite quote in the whole world is be the change you wish to see in the world. And you guys are definitely doing that. You are being the change and it is so impressive, and I can see a big smile on Ms. Frazier's face because you're going to be going up to the urn and doing great things, and Dr. Frazier is also going to be there next year. And uh, I can see that Ms. McCarthy is going to miss you big time <laughs> at the Pearl, but sounds like you've taught your classmates very well. So thank you so much for coming and sharing with us tonight, and I appreciate everything you've taught me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being leaders in your school. Absolutely. And, and thank you to Mrs. Uh, Greeley and Mrs. Reed for, for being leaders and organizing them Absolutely. and taking your time out of your day, yes. too. And, and thank you. Time. Thanks for being leaders for that, too. Appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank, thank you very much. Good job, guys.
they did to begin with. <laughs> Oh, that's what he's on crutches. And then he's out. That's right. right. Ten degrees cooler now. <laughs> it is amazing how that yes, happens. Yes, okay. absolutely. Um, so, would, would ever, actually, I'm so excited to see you. Would you like to? That would be great. Would um, everyone from the very middle school come up? So, Mrs. Abrams, Ms. Frazier, Dr. Frazier, we're going to invite you all three up to the guest up. table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's already in retirement. <laughs> Welcome. Are you, you're not going to come up, Ms. Abrams. Are you, are, you, are you going to come up and join them? No. <laughs> okay. Right. Dr. Pierre, would you like to introduce our... I, I would I would love to introduce our, our new assistant principal and give him a chance to talk and have uh, Ms. Frazier talk about the search process a little bit too. Mm -hmm. um, so Dr. Frazier is going to be joining us as assistant principal at the Ahern since we already see that Mrs. Abrams is looking forward to retirement. <laughs> <laughs> and as she the, should. <laughs> and as uh, Ms. Frazier will be taking over as the captain of that ship. And uh, just to say, right to begin with, there is no relationship between Miss <laughs> Frazier and Dr. Frazier. So the coincidence there with the name is just, it's so, it's just funny, actually. <laughs> um, but like, what I wanted to start off with, with having Dr. Frazier here, is to speak from when I had the opportunity to interview him. Mm -hmm. And we were able to speak at length about his curriculum background and his leadership opportunities that he's had um, in Sutton as a, as a social studies teacher and then as a team leader and after school and before school programs that he's run. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to bring up some of the, the comments, again, that came out from his letters of recommendation, from some of the other uh, references. And it just really speaks to the high caliber um, that he's going to bring to us here. And I think that the, the first thing that was echoed from many, and I know Ms. Frazier can um, speak to this as well, is the tremendous loss that his district feels with him coming to Foxborough. So that was definitely um, a theme throughout from letters and, and recommendations. And they really spoke to your high level of communication, your collaboration, your deep knowledge of curriculum and instruction. And, and I know from our conversations too um, and interviews, really you are a lifelong learner. When we think about your whole reasons for going and pursuing your doctorate, mm -hmm. um, when you have it, it just really speaks to the passion that you have for learning. And that speaks from, from your background as, as well. He's been very involved with um, Understanding by Design and Leading Training Workshops, which is the UBD, which we do as well here. So I know that's going to be a great resource to us and the work that we've been doing. And you'll just be able to complement that work. He's been very active in his school as far as many different initiatives, whether it's strategic planning, um, to teams and committees that you've done. So I don't know that there's really much you haven't done in your school system based on all of the different opportunities that are there but really speaking to your um, natural ability just a natural leader is, is something that was echoed through as well so I really want the time to be about you and to be able to speak to the committee a little bit more um, from you but you know Ms. Frazier do you want to talk a little bit about the um, the process as far as what took place because we know that we do have a very thorough process <laughs> um, we had a pool of uh, I believe 60 candidates um, we screened all of the, the applications to begin with. Did you say 60? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 60, 60, 60. Wow. Um, and we, uh, after screening all of the applications, we narrowed that down to eight applicants to bring in for an interview. Um, we had a committee of about 14 people, administrators, parents, teachers, curriculum directors, guidance. And um, from there, we narrowed down to 
I think two. And then we had we sat down with our mental health team and ran through some scenarios uh, that typically come up in the middle school just to see how how the candidates would respond in those situations. And we were really impressed with Tim's even keeled uh, mannerism and just the, his focus on kids and his ability to really stop and listen and try to gather all of the facts around the situation uh, before making any decisions uh, and considering all of the resources that he had available to him. Um, we feel that he's going to be a great fit. I think in the, our mental health team really felt like this, this feels right. This is the right person for us. So we're excited. Thank you. So would you like to share a little bit about your background with us? Sure. Um, <laughs> I'm a father of three kids. Uh, I think everything starts with family. So I have three kids, uh, five, six, and seven. So we're a busy household. Mm -hmm. um, I've had the honor of uh, teaching and leading in Sutton, Mass for eight years, and before that I was in Worcester. Um, and I loved my district, I loved working with the kids, um, but this was an opportunity that I, I could not, I couldn't even dream of. Uh, I'm so honored for the opportunity to serve in Foxborough. Really, I am, um, especially after watching the retirees with over 300 years of experience and these kids who felt empowered to make a difference from a reading that they did in class. It's just a special district and I'm very excited and thrilled for the opportunity to, to come and join the team and, and hopefully um, make a difference and, and help the students as much as those teachers I've seen tonight have. So. I'm very happy to have you here. Does anyone yeah. have any questions for Dr. Frazier? Welcome. Thank you. Uh, as you're getting accustomed to Foxborough, which is unique uh, for a lot of reasons, sometimes it's like a little bubble that we live in here. Um, what are some of the things that you hope to accomplish in your first year? Well, my first year, I would hope to learn the relationships that are going to make the students and our team most successful. Um, one of the beauties of working so long in a district that was also a bubble in many mm -hmm. ways um, is that I knew right where to turn or turn people to. If they were in a moment of need or in a moment of you know, opportunity, I could support them. And so I think my first year here is on establishing those relationships to be able to help students, families, um, staff members, and you know, each of us to, to make a bigger gain um, but without those relationships, it, it's going to be impossible. So that's my focus this year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I, I do have one question. So what, um, what is going to be the grade split? I know you did fifth and eighth grade last year with the, the web program. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be the same, or are we going to mix things up next year <laughs> with so our two assistant principals? For our other assistant principal, Dr. DeMarco, is currently working with the sixth and seventh grades. Mm -hmm. So next year, he'll move with them. He'll stay with, with seventh and eighth grade. Seventh and eighth. So and you'll be fifth and sixth. Wonderful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm very excited about that. It. Tim actually got to see a little bit of our web spring play. Oh, it was great. Our yeah. first training with yeah. our web leaders. Well, now you've started. got some incoming fifth graders and some familiar <laughs> faces. You can, I remember Thank you. Goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are some great kids. So. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. That's good Thank to you. know. And uh, I think you'll be, I, have you had any experience with the web program in the past? Because I think you're going to be really impressed with what Karen has done at the middle school with that program and how exciting it is for our kids. I'm excited for the eighth graders to come up to the high school, the ones who participated last year, and come in oh, we here. Get to be kind of on the receiving end. On the end other of end of things. So, yeah. I think it's students. Really, so. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. exciting. Do you have any questions for us? <laughs> no, thank you for the reception and, and, and letting me come on coming. a day like today, seeing everybody <laughs> honored and, and such a great project by those students. I'm, I'm glad with the timing of my surgery that I had to bump it a week um, yeah, or a Not a, a problem weeks. at all, and uh, we're glad you could come and introduce you to our community, and we'll, we'll see you on July 1st <laughs> when you start up here. Thank right? You. Is that right? That's the right timing? Yes, that's okay. correct. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> and Ms. Lord is not here, but I will say what she always says. Oh, Thank yeah. you for choosing Foxborough. Yes. <laughs> we're happy to have you here. You know, I actually was very remiss in not saying that Ms. Lord is out of town and is not able to join us. I think I was a little, we were running we were behind schedule, over. so I was a little bit remiss there, but she also, Beverly, was very sad to miss the recognition of retirees, mm -hmm. so 
I will take this moment to pass on her congratulations to them as well, since I forgot earlier. But uh, yes, that is that is absolutely what Ms. Lord will say. But I'm sure you will have the opportunity to meet our um, our senior. Uh, our, our second longest running school committee member in Foxborough ever uh, when she returns. <laughs> so. Right. It's a mouthful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you thank for you. coming. Thank nice you. to come. Thank you. Thank you, Welcome. Karen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Abrams. We will see you tomorrow at the eighth grade promotion ceremony, I believe. Yes, we will. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. All right. No, that was the fun part of the meeting. Now we're going to move on to the business parts of the meeting, which are also fun, right? Right. Right. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, our next item up is to vote on the proposed FY20 F to FY22 Foxborough Education Association Professionals uh, Collective Bargaining Agreement. So um, we discussed all the changes uh, during our executive session, and uh, the contract is the product of several months of negotiation time between uh, Mr. Yukna, yourself, the school committee, and the Teachers Association. I want to thank Todd Kayser and Lisa Alden and their team, uh, for, and Dr. Mello, um, uh, for their participation and the many hours of uh, communication <laughs> that went into uh, this document. I'm very glad uh, that we have come to some agreement. I didn't know if you wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the process or sure. the, the end result sure. before we vote. It, it's, <clears throat> as you said, a multi-month process, yeah. but I think that it really provides an opportunity for both sides from from the school committee administration side and then with our with our teachers union. Mm -hmm. It's a learning opportunity, really. Uh, the conversations are really good and to talk about what we really have here in Foxborough where we're so fortunate and teachers definitely feel very fortunate to be in Foxborough. I would like mm -hmm. to thank you for serving from school committee and Marilyn Weiss yeah. as well on the teachers professional contract and it was a lot of really good dialogue and I think that we're in a, in a good place here um, with the contract and and again very happy that we've been able to come to agreement there. So as well. And so the, the teacher's contract provides um, for three years, the next three years, and our teachers will receive a 2% COLA each mm -hmm. year in addition to some other um, terms that we've all agreed upon uh, during the course of the contract negotiations. If anyone would like to make a motion to approve the teacher's contract, unless there is any further, anything anyone wants to add at this point? Be happy to entertain a motion. <laughs> I, I, I would move that uh, we accept the FY20 to FY22 Foxborough Education Association Professionals Collective Bargaining Agreement. Second. All those in favor? Four zero zero. Thank you. And thank you for all your hard work, Mr. Yukna, Dr. Berdos, and Dr. Mello, and again, Mr. Todd Kayser and Lisa Alden and all of the representatives from the FEA. They had a, a really large team, and it's, yeah. it's a lot of hours mm -hmm. outside their school day. Right. It really is a big commitment. Mm -hmm. So for them to, to put in, it just shows how important it is. Absolutely. And um, the next contract to vote on is the FY20 to FY22 Foxborough Education Association Educational Assistance Collective Bargaining Agreement. Certainly um, very valued employees as well. Uh, to the school committee and many again many 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 weeks uh, actually months of negotiations went into it and thank you to Richard and Chris Connolly right. for serving on that negotiating team and as you know it's the same uh, members of the FAA, FEA Todd and, and Lisa and their um, educational assistance team um, spent the time and you and Bill and Allison as well so um, is there anything else to say? No, about I just think this? that going back to uh, Mr. Kayser and Ms. Alden as being the vice president and president, president yes. they serve both um, mm -hmm. units. Mm -hmm. And it, as we said, it's multiple months and it's multiple meetings. Right. So the time that they're putting in on top of 
their teaching load. It really is. It's a great commitment, and we're really appreciative mm -hmm. to have such a strong partnership with them and with educational assistants as well. And I think we're all happy to have been able to get this done before the end of the school year, just before, since tomorrow is the last day, but still before the end of our fiscal year and before the start of the next school year, I think um, we're all happy about that. So, um, and the educational assistants will also be getting a 2% COLA each mm -hmm. of the next three years, um, in addition to other contractual terms that we discussed mm -hmm. at our um, executive session. So, um, if there's no further additions to that, if someone would like to make a motion to approve the contract. Move that we um, accept the 2019 through 2022 FPS teacher contract as presented. Educational assistance. Educational assistance contract as presented. Thank you. Thank Second. you for the correction. Thank you. All those in, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Four zero zero. And again, thank you to everybody who participated in the many weeks of contract negotiations. There was a lot of work that went into those documents. On. We have a, um, a couple sets of minutes to approve. Uh, I we have in our packet we had the June 3rd, 2019 regular meeting minutes, and then Janet had placed at the table the June 3rd, uh, 2019 um, executive session meeting minutes. So we could start with the regular meeting minutes. Did anyone have any changes, additions, corrections, anything? I did not. No, I did not. I did not either. Okay. No, I so Would someone like to make a motion to approve these minutes? I motion that we approve the uh, meeting minutes from the June 3rd uh, public meeting. I second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Four, zero, zero. Thank you. And um, the executive session minutes from June 3rd as well. I see. I don't have any changes to the executive session minutes. Does anybody else have anything to add, change, correct? No. I Great move job to. By our clerk. <laughs> Thank you, clerk. Mr. Clerk. I move to accept the uh, June 3rd, 2019 executive session minutes as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 4 0 0. Um, could I get a motion to release these minutes as motion. well? Motion to release the executive session minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Or zero zero. All right. Oh, well, you got a person it really threw yeah. us <laughs> <It> throws the <laughs> whole thing on. Yeah, okay. You're just going to be making motions <laughs> all night long. Okay, so we are all caught up. Even though we started late, we have caught up. Nice job. Well, well done. Well done. Well done. It's just, we're working like clockwork here. Yeah. Trying to keep us on schedule. Um, so our next item up is the vote on the proposed elementary report card changes as a result of the pre-K through 12 math curriculum review, which we discussed at our last meeting. Um, Dr. Mello, would you like to lead us in to this uh, sure. item? Just to do a little recap as an outcome of the math curriculum review, the committee reviewed the report card language and upon reflecting mm -hmm. and discussing with teachers in the field as well as the committee, uh, the discussion was that when the time that that report card was developed, there was a lack of familiarity with the new standards. They were brand new at the time. <coughs> now that they have lived the standards, they better understand them. They wanted to publish a report card that was more straightforward, that was in parent-friendly language, and that really got to the heart of the standards that they were addressing so that they could really be useful both for the teachers and for the parents. So they uh, shared their changes in their report card language for each grade level at the last meeting. In addition to that, they were reviewing the numerical scale that is used on the report card, and the proposal was to change from the current language for a two, which says demonstrates a basic understanding of grade level, which they felt had sort of a negative connotation, to change it to demonstrates a developing understanding of grade level expectations, which they felt was much more reflective of our philosophy of growth mindset, and with students, we talk a lot about the power of yet, and you're not there yet, so they're developing. So those are the two major changes that are on the table, and we had discussed waiting until tonight to vote on approving those changes. 
so that people can have more time to consider. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anyone have any questions or further discussion about the report cards? As I remember, um, the the standards per grade uh, seemed simplified to yes. be not not. They were um, more concise. They were more concise yes. and um, to the point. Language. Yes. And understandable to exactly. the lay we tried person, to get out the jargon. Non math person right. parent. Yes. In my right. Opinion. Right. There was also so, some yeah. uh, a push for some consistency of language from K through four yeah. as well. That right. was my best yes. recollection on that as well. Yes. And I do like the change from from basic understanding to developing. I really, I wouldn't have made that negative connotation mm -hmm. until it was pointed out to me. But now that it's pointed out to me, I'm like, oh yeah, yes, <laughs> definitely. So there I was go. part of that first yeah. one, and I didn't perceive it that way either. No, I I never perceived it in a negative way reading it on the report card in the past. But now that it's that that's been presented. I, I like yes. developing understanding yes. much better yes. than basic Same. understanding. And so. too, when we're thinking about the standards, right. that's the standard for the end of the year. Right. right. So it makes more sense in the different points of right. the year. Right. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Okay. If there's no additional questions, um, would anybody like to make a motion to adopt the report card language? <clears throat> We're just trying to figure out what to say, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> got it? Bob? I move. Uh, no, no, go ahead. no, it's not the movement. <laughs> I'm just looking at, I had made some notes, and I just want to make sure that. Yep, I absolutely. Have, oh, Take your oh, time. I'm sorry. sorry, I didn't you mean to. Right <laughs> no. no, we're not, yeah. not rushing. We are actually now, we're ahead of schedule because this was 8.05, so we're at 8.02, so we're good. No, take your time, Rob. It's fine. We want to make sure. May I ask a point of clarification? Yes. The only action item that we're voting on is the proposed changes to the report cards, correct? Right. The review, the curriculum review that we discussed, that was, that was, that was we don't background approve information. That. Right. Correct. That's right. Yeah. That's not, That's it's just not done. our role to approve. No. Correct. Right. Well, well done. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The curriculum rev reviews yes. are always such a deep dive yes. into what we have done, and uh, it's, I, I have found them very um, interesting, enlightening. I always yeah. learn so much about what is going on yes. um, in the district, and I'm very impressed always by the, the, the pre-K through 12 aspect of it yes. and how um, well our Good. we're working. To, the vertical integration, yes. see, I'm trying to get my lingo down, down. Yes. How, how well everything dovetails from beginning to end. <laughs> So, but this, this approval is just for the report card because that is something that we do at this table. And I think one of the points that Allison mm -hmm. made before when mm -hmm. she was saying that we live the standards, right. there's such a difference, especially with the changes in the math standards in particular, to really live through those. Mm -hmm. And when you're trying to communicate, because that's the purpose of the report mm -hmm. card, is mm -hmm. to be able to communicate to parents so they can understand where the areas of growth still lie with their child and where their areas of where they're, they're really, you know, they're, they're in a great place. And I right. think that it does a better job of communicating Definitely. to the parents, which is the point mm -hmm. to be a communication tool. Well, yes. I think changing to the trimesters for report cards and these changes really give our teachers an ability to better assess where the kids are at throughout the elementary. It's, they grow and develop at such a, um, Rapid, rate, yes, absolutely. During and from beginning to end, and each at their own. And not pace. all at the same rate, right? Exactly. So, so that's why it's really helpful. Yeah. And I will say, I mean, anybody who is on social media, there are mixed um, perceptions of the standards. Mm -hmm. So being very clear about what they are is really helpful to parents. Yeah. And that's some of the feedback that we've received, and they're always so pleased when their child can explain their thinking and mm -hmm. their math and they're impressed right. when we've had the parents come in and they actually see what they're learning and they understand what the standards mean mm -hmm. they're pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. so I do think this these changes will go a long way into helping them digest the information at home but did you have specific questions uh, it was there were just I had some questions on some of the language because I using the goal of I'm trying to make sure that this is clear uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so it's just very specific language word like a word like automatic um, automaticity yes thank you yes. because I had I had to stop time that's not a clear word to me okay um, I know what it means I can figure it out I can you know um, but it's if we're if we're trying to get a word that people are going to automatically recognize it's a word that I think Might we fly. could find a we could find a different word that says the same thing there's some language in here that says um, uh, 
accurately counts to tell the number of objects within something. Well, is it within a, a margin of error? And again, I know what the intent is, and I. Uh, but if we're trying to be for clarity, is it mm -hmm. when you say within twenty, what you really mean is between zero and twenty? I'm assuming. So those, not within the margin of error of plus or minus twenty from the correct answer. So I will say that what you're actually critiquing is the language of the standards themselves. Sure. So the word automaticity comes from the standards. Sure, I, and, and that's that was my, that that's where my research led yes. me. And it was like, okay, yes. do I like? Yeah. So that is the, um, we are trying to take the challenge of the, the density of the standards mm -hmm. and streamline it while still honoring the intention sure. of the standards. So that is actually where we use our parent-teacher conference mm -hmm. to illuminate any of the misconceptions. So this is just one more step towards that. Perfection is elusive, but we try. No, absolutely. And like I said, that's kind of what I was good getting. Points, I was Very yes. good points. Because I, yes. I had researched I that. those, those things. You I was like, what? okay. Thank you for researching that. I love that. You're more educated about the math now. I like that. It's great. Hey. Appreciate it's that. It's my job, right? Well, I think, I think, too, when parents think about fluency, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's more in their wheelhouse when they're thinking about reading. But when it comes to the automaticity with math, the students will be able to tell you yes. about automaticity, sure. and they'll be able to tell their parents. Right. But it's just not a word before the new standard sure, that right. was used as frequently. Right. Yes. And it's something that we had to learn about ourselves. And we actually have resources and videos up on our BIT Elementary Math site for parents that sort of explain that as well. Now, they have to go and click those. You know, that's, that's part of the challenge as well. But, mm -hmm. um, but I appreciate those points. Okay. Do we still have elementary school math nights? We do. I figured we did. It's yes. just been a long time we since do. I've been in elementary school. Yes. So. They're really great. Yeah. They really are great. And they've been expanded mm -hmm. to coming in during the day and working, parents working with their children during the math time. Math mornings. That's cool. Yeah. Parents come in and the students teach their parents the math. <laughs> it's really good. That's awesome. Yes, that's Ms. Hendrickson. I could use that. Could they teach school committee members a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a great teaching and learning highlight to have the students come in and teach. All right, let's make a note of that. Let's yes. do that. Mm -hmm. We I don't think we've had a math. Um, we had a number talk, we but had that a was a talk. couple not, of years not, ago. I was going to say this year. I don't no, think we've we had a math one. So I think it is time okay. to have our, our elementary students come in and teach us a few things. They can't oh. ask us math questions. Though. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Do you remember when they taught you about viscosity for science? Yes, yes. I do <laughs> remember that. I yes. do. I have learned a lot yes. sitting at this <laughs> table. Yes. Brent, do you have a question? I don't. Okay, you were waving your pen, so I just wanted to make sure. It's my natural fidgeting. That's okay. Fidget away. Just wanted to make sure. Um, so, so, Rob, are you I, satisfied? I'm good, yes. Yeah. So, I will go ahead and make a motion that we <clears throat> accept the proposed changes um, to the report. Elementary. Thank you. Elementary report cards. I'll second Excellent. Rob's motion. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? <laughs> Four zero zero. Thank you, Dr. Mello, for shining a little more light on that for Thank all of us. So we much. appreciate that. And thanks for allowing us the extra week to digest absolutely. it and absolutely. do that research. I think that was very valuable. Yes, yes. absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay, moving on to our strategic plan report on progress and followed by the technology plan report on progress. Yes. So both, so both are pretty exciting. <laughs> Lots of reporting out. Yes. So both plans are um, three-year plans. So to speak to the strategic plan first, we're in the second year of the three-year plan. And what we thought we would do is highlight under each of the objectives, because this is highlighting what has taken place mm -hmm. this current school year for this year two. And then it will connect, as you see, when we get to the technology plan. There's so much of it that kind of intertwines. Mm -hmm. And um, we can stop along the way with any questions that you have. Okay. I also have it on the screen up here just to, if we need to go back and ask specific questions. Okay. Thank you. So the, the first objective, which is to develop responsible global citizens by providing dynamic, dynamic learning experience within a rigorous curriculum that fosters high levels of achievement for all students. This one really speaks to our academic achievement. So we have three goals mm -hmm. in this area. And one of the things that we have done in the past, but much more so this year, is we went through and we put the actual school committee presentation date. Mm -hmm. Because so much of this, particularly in the academic areas, mm -hmm. you've had full presentations on so many of the things that go towards these goals. 
So outlining when this year this presentation took place, mm -hmm. Allison and I thought that would be helpful that if anybody needed to go back for any reason, that we had a full presentation that would speak to that. So for example, on that first one, which is improving academic achievement for all students, that is the OECD test for schools that um, we had the third administration of that, which was the randomized uh, group of students that are 15 year olds. We took that for the third time in April. And that is a cognitive test, unlike the MCAS, which is based on standards. Mm -hmm. So we had that presentation back in October, along with all of our other baseline and benchmark data speaking to that goal. Our second goal was to increase opportunities for STEM for all students. So, you know, we recently, we actually didn't put the date in, but we just had the right. presentation on the Algebra 1 high school pilot. Mm -hmm. You've been hearing a lot about the Project Lead the Way that is coming. The teachers will be trained this summer. And we just had our uh, presentation at the State House of our Girls Who Code Club. And just two weeks ago, we had our sixth grade STEM Expo. So we thought those were all great examples mm -hmm. that you're familiar with that you've heard about at this table. Um, also, speaking along those lines of things that are above and beyond, curricular opportunities and programs that inspire global awareness and cultural competencies, there are so many things. The We Club, mm. um, the senior project that we just heard about, having uh, World Culture Night, these are all things that are just alive and well in our district that you can I, I talk to anybody and you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So those are all great examples of things that you've seen at the table. So you'll see where we're in year two, so many of these are ongoing because it's going to be a focus of de depending on the grade level, the curriculum area, what that looks like for looking at global competencies right. and global awareness. I'm not sure some of these were, are, are not really going to be completed because we're always, always going to going. be continuing right. to improve right. academic achievement and providing these curricular activities. And that's okay. I mean, that, that we'll, we'll continue to make forward progress and, and be ongoing, but I, I don't know if we'll get to a point where we can say complete it. I agree. Right. right? And sometimes the tool changes along the way. So we used yeah. to have Pearson Inform for our data analytics. We've switched over to Illuminate Education, which has much more capacity mm. for us. And that is definitely a focus for us because it really helps us analyze right in real time what's happening with our achievement, but also with our achievement gaps. And we can track by subgroups, and teachers can really use that to inform their instruction. We had a presentation on that. Um, Alyssa Masharnik and um, Karen Borges. Uh, she, yes, Karen. And didn't Dr. Wazlewski come in and yes. at, at the same time? Yes. Was that either last year or the year before? It was probably last year. Yeah. was the first year that we yeah. had it. Yes. That was excellent. Yes. So that, is, really that excellent. continues to grow. So that's the second yep. bullet on mm -hmm. the bottom. We're going to just go through and just highlight some specific, because if we do every single one, right. as you said, nobody will be awake. If anyone has questions, though, at the um, end or jump ongoing. in. Uh, um, I would say Dr. Keep, Mello, keep at, the, at, at the end or ongoing. We can stop at each objective and mm -hmm. see what questions may be for each of those. At the end of each objective. That's probably a good way to do it. Um, another thing which is at the top of the next page that is actually a major push, and all of these dots are connected, thinking about mm -hmm. student achievement mm -hmm. and thinking about opportunity gaps and achievement gaps. We have just had a year-long group that was working on our district curriculum accommodation plan, the DCAP, mm -hmm. which is part of, and this is a lot of, I know, educational jargon, but its response to intervention mm -hmm. was a program where we were trying to identify challenges sooner, put interventions in place so that we could see if we could mitigate some of the risk for students. That is actually expanded to what's called the multi-tiered system of support, which is a national program in Massachusetts. They call it the Massachusetts tiered system of support. And that encompasses academic, behavioral, and social emotional needs for students with mm -hmm. interventions at each of those. So our DCAP, which you'll be hearing more about next year, mm -hmm. outlines interventions in each of those areas that are um, grade span specifics. There's an elementary set, middle school, and high school. So we're really excited about that coming on board. And we also have professional development lined up for that as well. Mm -hmm. And within all of these areas too, when we're doing that deeper dive to look at those achievement gaps, it is also looking at, for instance, our population of students that are taking the advanced mm -hmm. placement courses, our honors courses, looking at for instance, if we have a population of students that is special education, what percentage of those students that are special education that are still taking those advanced placement courses are taking the honors courses and looking at that balance so we're making sure that all of those opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. And part of that, skipping down to the fifth bullet, um, 
thinking about at the other end of the spectrum, expanding opportunities for computer science. That has been definitely on the radar for a while. That's part of really the catalyst for the Girls Who Code, the Project Lead the Way, and then thinking about how we can expand opportunities at the high school level, which will be coming soon. One, um, I think, big springboard for that will be switching our APP Tech course over to computer science for uh, for innovators and makers. We're really excited about that. Which is the project and that's at the, the way. That's at the middle the school level. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah, so we can build that pipeline to the high school. Yeah. Do you think that will help with the gender gap that we're seeing at the high school with engineering and computer science classes? We hope so. Um, interestingly, though, we were just at Meditech when we were accepting, yeah. graciously accepting our grant. Mm -hmm. And they told us from the field that that is exactly what they see in the mm -hmm. field. That is still a very male-dominated. Mm -hmm. um, and they talked, actually, I think they did their own little action research and surveys that it's very isolating work in that mm. they hear from women that women don't like to be isolated like that. They like to talk, surprisingly. Mm. Yes, they like to talk with other people. So, um, but we will see. Mm -hmm. We will see. Interesting. But it still is very interesting in that our girls, so many of them go on and pursue the STEM subjects, even though they may not be taking the engineering course oh, or yeah, the computer that's science right. that course, right. yes. we definitely see that upon with our graduates. Mm -hmm. And strong math achievement. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So then also under objective one, which we've talked about here at the table, is to promote appreciation for cultural diversity and a value mm -hmm. of differences. And really, we've worked with some of the recommendations that came out of the Bias and mm -hmm. Discrimination yes. Committee. How do we make it more visible? What does that look like in our schools, in our curriculum itself, the literature selections that we have, whether it's in our English courses at the high school or whether it's read aloud textbooks at the elementary level with our librarians that are really looking at what are the resources that they have? And then it then flows into our guidance, group guidance lessons in elementary classes as well. And then another one just to highlight there is that expanding student access and exposure to problem solving with real world application. I just wanted to pause on that one because that's what you saw here tonight. Yeah. And thinking about the level of engagement and the level of motivation, <laughs> which are things we had to have talked about, the motivation equation when we do our instructional rounds, authentic learning contexts bring natural motivation for students mm -hmm. and engagement. And the research shows that the learning is authentic. and, they, and understanding is enduring. You know those kids know about those sea animals mm -hmm. and that they're never going to forget that because they care about it. So that's, we're trying to find those opportunities more and more and bringing in primary sources and having kids read from that and get inspired is just, I mean, I remember doing that as a kid, but I don't remember being, mm -hmm. I remember reading, but I don't remember being empowered to actually use my voice to do something. Well, and that actually flows into our next objective yes. in the strategic plan as well. So. Did you have any questions on that first yeah. objective? What would you like to see for point three? Um, cultural opportunities and programs inspire global awareness and build cultural competencies. I feel that's one that many districts struggle with mm -hmm. to find genuine substantive opportunities and having a clear vision of what they would like to see as a school system at mm -hmm. the different levels. And I'm just curious, is that is that a conversation that's ongoing within the various uh, levels of, of, of schooling and you know what, what, what you know I think one to actually there's two things that come to mind one is okay. our project-based learning and having more teachers come on board with learning about how to run project-based learning classes because yes. by design you're looking for authentic problems that have a civics component right. that can help you learn about things beyond yourself and same with project lead the way whether the problems are small problems in your community or larger problems in the world, there is that avenue for kids to explore them. And that's, I think that's relatively still new-ish to traditional education. And so getting more people trained on how to do that has been our objective. And our teachers have the opportunity to take the, the course from the Buck Institute on project-based learning. And that's through our partnership with LSDO. So I do think once we get more of those opportunities, these will sort of grow. The basis will, a yes. stronger basis yes. for genuine opportunities. Yeah. Does that make there. sense? Mm -hmm. It does. And even if we go back to the um, partnership with Ukraine when mm -hmm. we had that with the community center, so those students 
in Romney, Ukraine, ended up presenting at the MASQ conference in October. Even though that was a project from last year, yeah. they continued that and they presented in the, the global um, platform at MASQ mm -hmm. and used Skype to present with them at the same time. Yeah, that's great. So yeah. it's little things that grow and continue to grow into other grade levels when we can find those opportunities of how can we expand this to where they have, they're outside the bubble mm -hmm. of Foxborough or Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll see in the tech plan, there's another example where the eighth grade world language class, they were Skyping with Guatemala, I think it was, and they were talking about water purification and issues that they have there and how they could solve that problem. So the opportunities are there, it's just cultivating more. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we move on to objective two? So the second objective, which is to continue to strengthen our school culture, ensuring that students, staff, parents, and all stakeholders feel valued, safe, and have a voice. I think we had, again, a great um, mm -hmm. example of that this evening. So there's three goals under this particular objective. And this first one here, mm -hmm. which we've been engaging in for um, about eight years now, which is the Culture and Climate Survey. and that was administered again this spring. Our participation rate was really good. We're waiting to get the exact results back on that. We actually have a conference call tomorrow. But that provides the voice of students at the middle school and high school level to speak to culture and climate, to speak to school safety, to speak to their academic experience, and that allows the parents as well as the teachers to talk about culture and climate in schools. Mm -hmm. So that data is really important for us. Mm -hmm. And um, when we see where we do really well, that is great. But we then want to see, well, where are other opportunities? And one of the things that we will have when we are able to report out on this in the fall is some of the questions which has been asked at this table before. Well, if this is Foxborough, what does it look like nationally? Mm -hmm. And so some of those questions, we're going to be able to see those comparison points. That'll this be time for the yeah, first that'll time. that'll be very Contextualizing it yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. we, we have a number of questions that we've asked that have been more Focus. contextual right. to yeah. Foxborough, right, right. but at the same time, there's some that, well, what would this look like if nationally? In, in another district, yeah. So um, that one, again, continuing to monitor and evaluate the social emotional and mental health needs mm -hmm. of our students. And I think that you know, whether it was the guidance update that mm -hmm. we had recently and speaking at the secondary level and some of the things that we've talked about, I am I go earlier this year and some of the other presentations mm -hmm. from the other schools really speak to that. And at the same time, it's within our curriculum, whether it's the class meetings that they have yeah. every day, whether it's our second step curriculum at the um, secondary mm -hmm. level, whether it's whether it's group guidance. And I know even just from the Student Advisory Council, hearing from the students to talk about whether it's somebody that's a growth mindset mm -hmm. before, but again, giving them a voice, where are the questions and you know areas that they struggle. And we also know that if they're not in a in a happy, safe place, learning is not going to take mm -hmm. take place. And then the third one, which is expanding our professional learning communities, which is providing that collaboration mm -hmm. time. And that has been a, a great expansion this year, mm -hmm. particularly at the high school, Absolutely. for them to have that time. The strategies, many of those ongoing and will continue to be refined each year because it might look a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But that, that first one there where we're using perception data, whether it's the culture and climate survey or what you heard me present on my entry findings, mm -hmm. so much perception data because that's so critically important of what we're hearing and what we're seeing, but perception in addition to more of our hard data points. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, you know, what can happen when a PLC is joined by one of our curriculum directors mm -hmm. and the powerful learning that can happen there between the teachers to increase their instructional strategies. That was something that uh, Ms. Hendrickson mm -hmm. collaborated with Mr. Stanton on this year around some very specific goals. Mm -hmm. And it, it was more of a, I wouldn't even say a pilot, it was a trial. And that will be expanded to the other schools because it was such a success. So, yeah, teachers really value the PLC time. Mm -hmm. And I would just say that for this objective, so much still goes back to the social, social emotional learning committee that we had two years ago because we came up with like a two year action plan from that. We're constantly going back to that and looking to see, well, what have we done? 
how is it being sustained? Mm-hmm. Where do we still need to focus our efforts? Right. And at the same time, it's the Bias and Discrimination Committee, too. Oh, yes. I think my, my point is when we have a committee in place and we come and we present here at school committee and we have the recommendations, it it's not, just beginning. It's, it's not the just end of beginning. It, right. it yeah. really is. We're continually coming back to that. You'll see that reflected in principal school improvement plans because they're at the end of their three years. They'll be presenting those in August Mm -hmm. and September and so many connections that go back to those recommendations. So questions on objective two? Okay. Very good. So for objective three, Mm -hmm. to uh, to enhance district infrastructure and technological capabilities, to provide an increasingly safe and supportive physical and innovative academic school environment, we thought that we would turn it over to Bill to go over some of these things. I think um, some of the major ones that you're obviously looking at is, is the uh, Borough School and the, um, the track and field. The Borough School has been progressing very well on time. Um, it's been a very tight time frame with the MSBA, but we haven't missed a date yet. Uh, we expect that we will be out to bid um, midsummer. Um, and we hope to have fully awarded contracts um, in early October that would put us in the ground in November. Uh, we just completed our pre-qualifications of all of the uh, file sub bidders, uh, which there's 14 different categories. What was really nice to see is we had anywhere from four um, subcontractors to as many as nine under each of the categories, so that's a great uh, Mm -hmm. grouping. Uh, Also bodes well towards the bidding side, because obviously the more competition, the better you are. And we had nine GCs, so again, above what we anticipated. Uh, So in total, we had 101 uh, different parties interested in that project as it moves forward. Um, It's a good sized project for a lot of companies, uh, not too big, not too small, and uh, so that should be, um, again, one of our our priorities. It's, It's been the district's priority for years. Um, As far as the the track, field, concession stands, um, the finally uh, are on the last phase of the track side of it. Um, That actually started today. Uh, It will take approximately two weeks to complete the eight lane track. Um, And once that's completed, other than some punch list items on the bleachers um, and around the grounds itself, um, that phase of it will be complete. And the final phase is the concession stand. which is continuing to, to move forward. Uh, we had the rough plumbing completed uh, last week. Um, so we'll now we'll start uh, with the actual structure mm-hmm. itself. Um, and again, hopefully uh, by you know beginning of back to school, we'll have a, uh, a session there, but we, we have a lot of work to do this summer to get to that. Um, but I think we are really finally closing down on, on that major, those major areas mm-hmm. there. Um, we continue obviously to work with our police and fire departments on all of our safety plans. Um, I think that's kind of one of our critical components every year. Obviously, we we refine them further and further each time we meet, each time we actually do a drill, each time we we look at a building and and go through a process. And every time, unfortunately, something happens in the world, uh, gives us pause to look at something else that, you know, could we do differently. Um, I think we've, we've been very fortunate because of our relationship with both the police and fire departments to have done a lot and accomplished a lot over the last few years. But this is one of those areas where you can never do enough. Um, and so, you know, it's not just financially, it's, it's, it's just a lot of things you have to look at to try to figure out the best ways to prevent. Something is just human errors you have to change the way that they look at things and, and uh, make sure we have, you know, the strongest uh, setup we can, the best responses we can. We're very, like I said, we're very fortunate with our connections with those two departments um, that they work very well with us. And they've gotten rich, much more responsive in their trainings as far as the drills because now there's more interaction in the drills, uh, even down to the elementary level where they could put up a fake fire uh, in a hallway to see how the kids react, um, you know, just by putting up a blow up like thing to see if the kids would actually go a different direction. Um, and it's very important, but it's, it's real life that they have to understand and make sure that we do it right. Um, so that's been, that's been great really over the um, last few years and, and obviously um, under Chief Baker we've had a great relationship and uh, now with uh, Chief uh, Kelleher in place uh, that will continue along because he's really been our sponsor through most of this uh, over the, the years here too. So I think we've, we've accomplished a lot. I think we'll never do it all um, because it just things change. Um, but uh, again, with your support, we've actually uh, been able to make a lot of changes and a lot of improvements. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the biggest things about that whole the borough, the, I mean, the high school complex too, was was a 
safety thing for our kids and again um, next spring being able to have everybody stay on campus for and, and even in the fall uh, for running and stuff mm -hmm. like that not running on our parking lots around the school and stuff like that uh, I think is going to go a long way to, to leave an issue that we've all been concerned about that one thing happening right. that mm -hmm. you never want to talk Takes about. One. Right. So. Absolutely. Right. Okay. I absolutely agree with that. Very exciting. Anybody have any <laughs> questions about objective three? Anyone? Okay. All right, great. So moving on to four, which is to maintain strong support for public education within the town of Foxborough. We are so fortunate mm -hmm. in the town of Foxborough that support that we have for the schools, obviously from the school committee, and the town support when we think about our budget right. and the work that goes behind the scenes to be able to put that budget together that's fiscally responsible and the partnerships that we have with local businesses as well. So Allison was speaking a minute ago about Meditech with them being here. Great new partner for us. It's our second year to partner with them. We go and talk with them. So that's a $10,000 donation as an example. So what are we using that money for? And so that's Project Lead the Way. So when we had the opportunity to go in to talk with all of them and to present, they were wowed with what we're doing here and the questions that they ask because of at their level, they want to know about what it looks like in schools. So just continuing to cultivate those partnerships and for us to get the reaction from them that they like what we're using the yes. money for. Mm -hmm. So and to be honest, I was surprised that more school, that they hadn't already, I just presumed they would have heard about it because many schools do it. And it was the first time they had heard of it. So it was exciting to be the first one to tell them about it. Mm. They were very interested. And then again, um, the, the next thing that I wanted to highlight here, not again, but just to highlight, is that number four there, develop and implement a streamlined, comprehensive communication plan mm -hmm. that promotes the Foxborough Public Schools to all stakeholders. So a lot has been accomplished in this area this school year, and we're continuing. So for example, the new web presence that was launched in December. Along with that, we launched School Messenger, which was the new communication to be able, whether it's phone calls, email, we'll be able to do text messages um, for parents if they prefer to get text message alerts, mm -hmm. um, secure document delivery, where it's a matter of logging in to not just to see what you've seen in the past with report cards, but being able to log in to see other information. Sure. And part of um, which I think people are going to be really excited about for the fall. So if you think about as a parent, and it's the beginning of the school year, and you have all the forms, and you're having to write down your child's name, <laughs> and their date of birth, and all of the emergency contact information yeah. over and over. I have four children, so it's it's a long night that when all of that my job yes. takes place. <laughs> so the online registration piece that will go live, we've been working this year, the professional development for our secretaries in each of the buildings. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a verification process now. Yeah. So it's all going to be online. There are certain things that you still will have to put the information in. So for instance, we're not just going to accept that allergies are the same for a child mm -hmm. or emergency contacts are the same. But parents will be able to verify the information that they've provided to us in the past, which will be really nice yes. for the enrollment process yes. too. Um, it will be online. So whether you're filling out multiple forms or it's the initial enrollment, all of that is going to be through the secure document delivery with part of that. That is fabulous. And the other part too, like the My School Bucks that we've talked uh -huh. about, it's all going to be integrated too within PowerSchool. So the integration pieces, it's a phased approach. Mm -hmm. So we're going to phase all of that in and then integrate the systems. And so it's kind of like one-stop shopping. You're not going to need multiple usernames and passwords. That's great. And the, the My Family ID for the registration for athletics here at the high school has been awesome as well. That's been a, it, you know, because yeah. that's just multiple Huge forms if you have right? multiple sports. And it's great to be able to just go online and do that and upload your medical forms and not have to make 300 copies of everything. So. And just even things like our automated attendance mm -hmm. calling that we were able to, to implement mm -hmm. this year. So those things may seem simple, but the amount of work to be able to yeah. implement and launch those, mm -hmm. it really is a lot of behind the scenes work to be able to do that, whether mm -hmm. it's the attendance calling or the secure document delivery 
or moving towards um, the integration of those systems within our student information system. And still a fraction of the time savings on the Absolutely. other end, like in terms of what your what the district staff have to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Nice. So that's one that's related to productivity, and it's great to be efficient in that area. We're also trying to be more efficient in our messaging so that people can hear what's going on in our schools more regularly and more easily. Maybe they don't all listen to school committee, unfortunately. <laughs> so as you may have heard us talk about, the students uh, and and under, well, we, we asked them, have created a universal hashtag. Mm -hmm. So when people are searching on Twitter, they'll be able to put it in and all the tweets will come up and we will be doing a launch campaign in the fall where we can start to spread the word that it's hashtag the borough 02035 that will follow all of our tweets. So that will be cool. very efficient for people to use their social media and make the most of their minutes that way. And speaking of the social media, the other piece that we're looking at is the Facebook and the Instagram. Mm -hmm. So that way the feeds if we have a Foxborough Public Schools Facebook page and then Instagram, it will send the same information. Yes. So I know we've talked about right. some would not use Twitter, they would use Facebook. And we can use so the hashtag that way as well on Instagram. We're going to move to that Foxborough again Moves. to broaden our communications. Excellent. Great. Exciting. Any questions about Objective 4? Did you fit? You didn't finish no, no, Objective okay. 4. I'm sorry. No, we're good. No, we're good. <laughs> Jump ahead. There's a lot there. There's a lot of good stuff. We still stuff. have the, the technology plan awaits, so. Well, and the technology plan does dovetail very well yes, with does. our strategic plan. Yes. But does anyone have any any questions about Objective 4 that we haven't gotten to? All right. Then if you would like to move on to the technology sure. plan, I think. So the technology plan, again, three-year plan. We're in the second year. I think we'll be able to highlight some more at the, the upper you know, the 30,000-foot view because so many of them do connect to the strategic mm -hmm. plan. You know, this one has five different objectives, which is really looking at technology, professional development, technology, literacy, what that looks like. Again, going back to the global piece that we talked about before, the accessibility to technology, which would then come to funding mm -hmm. as well, and then um, really the, the data information and privacy pieces. So that, that first objective, when we think about technology, we work really hard, and I think tonight's example was a really good one in that we want it to be purposeful. Mm -hmm. It's not technology for technology's sake. Right. So they are producers, not just consumers. Mm -hmm. So that first objective is, is really focusing on the teaching and learning and the, the curriculum. Yeah. And that was a great example of it right there. And I think that objective has some really nice language in it about advancing our academic mission through innovative and effective technologies, resources, and services. And the word innovation really struck us. So when I came on board last year and I joined the Tech Steering Committee, we realized they had done a lot with infrastructure, interactive whiteboards, a technology plan. And as we started to look at some of these bigger objectives, we realized it wasn't just technology, like Amy said. It's really about innovative practices. Mm -hmm. So we are now known as the District <clears throat> Innovation Team. This is still our plan, but we have a new moniker because that's what we're focused on is innovation. Well, I think it just shows how far we have come since, well, since my kids started kindergarten, there weren't whiteboards, and right. I think they were piloting a whiteboard yes. mm -hmm. per elementary school. Yes. And there were no tech integration Which specialists. Which started with the FACES right. grant. Uh -huh. Yes, that's the right. The FACES grants, I remember that. And when I started on the school committee, we still didn't have a technology plan. We were working on it, and then it was a five-year plan, and it did. It involved, you know, hardware and physical yes. technology, and it, it has grown and evolved so much. I love that um, innovation. Yes, we have the infrastructure to support it now. So we do. it's been exciting to watch people and embrace different applications that improve student learning. And we should say that that goes back to Objective Four and the support from the community yes, because huge. if we didn't have the um, the funding to put the hardware in place and and to add our tech integration special special and really the entire technology department now, Correct. which we have, um, which also serves on the town side as well. But uh, if we didn't, I mean, that didn't exist a few years ago. And without the community support for it, you know, we wouldn't be as far ahead as we are no, right now. No, absolutely. And when you think about the SAMR model and getting to the place where mm -hmm. people are just going beyond what they could have possibly done before. You saw tonight with the green screen what mm -hmm. the students yeah. did. Yeah. And I had a first grade teacher sending me photos of, they read The Very Hungry Caterpillar, Eric Carl, we all know that story. 
and the kids did research projects on different insects and then they used the green screens that showed them sitting on top of the insects. To a first grader, that's the coolest thing that could ever happen. Yeah. There was another picture um, of a first grader superimposed with the green screen sitting on Mr. Stanton's desk reading the story aloud and it, it looked it really looked so real, it was seamless. Mm -hmm. So those types of things, teachers cool. are very excited to experiment with different experiences for kids because we have access to mm -hmm. this. So, so much of this is ongoing, mm -hmm. but there are maybe things you haven't heard about, like we have 3D doodle pens. So a student can draw something and then draw it in the three dimensions. For an, a great example that I saw was the Eiffel Tower mm -hmm. and bringing that to life through a 3D pen or using Tinkercad or Scratch or these other applications. Um, we have, you heard about Study Sync last year and students getting sort of that adaptive learning experience and Redbird came out of the math curriculum review using things like Flipgrid and it is it cannot be um, overstated the the impact of the technology integration specialists on supporting teachers in using these technologies because mm -hmm. it lowers the risk they feel supported and we had a hefty amount of professional mm -hmm. development as well I don't know if there's anything else you want to add Amy. no I, I I think that it just speaks to those examples and again it speaks to the support of the community because mm -hmm. yeah so so many districts do not have the resources at the fingertips that our teachers have and the best part is they are using them yes mm -hmm. and I will say to your point Tina of where we've come from there was a time when we needed to buy the clickers to do the student response mm -hmm. systems now everything can be done from a phone or a device on these interactive cloud-based things Kahoot mm -hmm. and Socrative and teachers are using them to get real-time information from kids and it's so engaging we don't need any extra technology mm -hmm. so it's been really really nice and, and then there goes this, the second objective, which is the professional development, where yep. you're saying it's so heavy. Does anybody have anything on objective one before we go on to objective I, I, two? Well, I, one, I hadn't even occurred, so you just said it. The first one, the first one I had, it occurred to me earlier, and I just wanted to ask the question, because um, we've referenced it a couple of times, the girls who code. Yes. So, great idea. Mm -hmm. um, as we get more and more into um, non-gender identification, mm. when do we change that to kids who code? Mm -hmm. It's a club that's actually a national club. I, I understand that. Like, yeah, just like no, girls who run and girls who, right. but at some point, yeah. when do we move away from gender identification? Yeah, it's a really good question. It is. And I will say, even though it's not explicit in the title, boys were obviously welcome. So I think it's a worthy conversation. Right. Yeah. I do. Oh, so it's a good question, Rob. Yeah. We've even gotten away from having like the boys and the girls on right. the bathroom passes. Right. So I think I mean, it's, it's a valid just a matter point. at some point. And I realize yeah. you know, it's the incentive behind it. Yeah. And, and right. part of it goes back to where we've had our gap. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And looking at the, the girls that are not taking some of the STEM courses and right. we need to build that pathway for them. And so this was to create equity to, to yeah. create the equity piece and that it was an opportunity to start to get some more interest mm -hmm. that's there. Right. Right. No, I, I mean, I understand the history of it, I under, but of I, I was doing something today, and every other, every question was, they, you, could, you could see where the question had changed to not be yes, mm -hmm. absolutely specific. Yep. So that's just the world yep. that we're moving right. into. So when do we? So the qu second question I had, and it hadn't occurred to me until you just said it, which is, um, and perhaps it's, this is not the right form for me, so if it's not, you guys just tell me that. Um, if we are allowing are teaching professionals to use their personal devices in the classroom, are we then responsible for subsidizing that? I actually that's, think that um, that's Allison the, was talking more about the students okay, using yeah, their fine, own um, devices, I, yeah. their, yeah, their in the world, tablets if I, and If you phones, need me yeah. to use my phone. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was the students. Okay, but that's yes. cool. Like they may scan a QR code. Right. So they'll have activities around the room where it's um, like a scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. And they'll use, sometimes we've, they'll use the iPads mm -hmm. that are there. Or if they're at the upper levels, they'll use their own devices to be able to scan the QR codes right. as an example. Okay. Yeah. But it's a yeah. good, fair, fair question. question. Right. Mm -hmm. So objective two, unless anyone else has anything on object, anything else on objective one? On that fair question, is there a desire? Um, in the near term to move towards providing technology for all students? Well, you can take that one, Amy, because we are a bring your own device. So, so we're a bring your own device and, and yep. not moving to a one-to-one. -one. We have one-to-one -one opportunities, so because of all of the laptop carts, in addition to the labs experience that we still have, yep. 
we can bring in carts to where you know an entire grade level will have devices right if they're ready mm -hmm. and um, we've chosen to go that way um, for the reason that one we needed for MCAS testing to make sure that we had enough to where you could do grade levels at a time and we also have found that students they like their own device whether it's some that are working off an iPad or a laptop mm -hmm. and then when speaking with some other districts we found the, the um, the cost that's associated with the sustainability, yeah, the insurance, sustainability so. and insurance. So we're really looking at one-to-one -one opportunities instead of any kind of a lease program or purchase program for students. But I, we're also I think it's a, I think it's partly in a, in a decision that you know the administration as well as the school committee in the past has made is that we do again we have great support from the community but the uh, the resources that we have if we go to deploy it into the one-on-one -on -one environment totally although quite honestly we have in total computer capacity we're close um, we're probably at about you know uh, 80 percent of, of, of you know capacity as far as what we have for computers but if we go that route we are definitely going to take away from other areas mm -hmm. on a regular basis mm -hmm. and at this point the decision has been made to go the route we're going which gives us the ability to spread those funds over more areas and and again enhance other uh, parts of our curriculum uh, whether it's AP courses whether it's you know just other offerings in general um, and and again it, while it's relatively new probably in the last five to six years most of the districts that have gone that direction are really finding it hard on the renewal cycle because they're all starting to come into it and it's it's just that much more money that the community has to come up with um, and again we all know that that's a it's not an unlimited mm -hmm. fund so practically speaking how does that work from a standpoint of equity in classrooms where it would be nice to have across the board access well we have a, a number of um, different mechanisms one aside from like the laptop carts that are coming in and I just I'll, I'll come back to that question but one other example I wanted to give that we found is some of the software programs that we run they require different operating systems and if a child had their own device it wouldn't be able to necessarily run some of the science programs that we have mm -hmm. Correct. so that's another piece that by us using our own devices we're able to identify what the need of the device is mm -hmm. which makes a big difference there but we also have um, other partners like the angel fund so if we have students at the high school or at the middle school level and they don't have a laptop to use at home then they donate laptops that have been refurbished mm -hmm. and we actually have someone here from the high school that takes them down to a particular person who completely refurbishes the laptop and then it's given to the student mm -hmm. that who doesn't have one mm -hmm. so and to your other point not every teacher as I'm sure you know wants to or is ready to implement technology so there doesn't seem to be an issue we have signups that we use that are electronic sure. people have them when they need them there doesn't seem to be a huge piece of competition the, the challenge is sometimes around the testing season and just making sure that's why we have them right so that we had like the bandwidth that was something we had to deal with to make sure it could handle the capacity but in terms of the devices themselves because we have that spectrum it hasn't really been an issue mm -hmm. yet Maybe as we get, you know, into 10 or more years down the road, maybe everybody will be fighting for them. I don't know, but we're not there yet. Right. But we, but we look at question. things such as our labs, where we have a number of labs at the middle school and the high school. Taking those, the cows, the computer on wheels, the carts, mm -hmm. is it more advantageous for us to have more laptops versus fixed in the labs? Well, there's pros and cons that go back and forth depending on what you're running, yep. having it directly hardwired with the network. So it's something that we're constantly assessing evaluating and deciding what's the best direction and sometimes it's different by grade level or by content area mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's also the content area is a good thing because if you look at like our video you know program is a totally different system um, does not run on our laptops or anything else we actually have to buy you know the Apple systems to do what we're doing right. the same thing with our CAD lab um, so again to, to Amy's point is it's really the technology we're buying is based on the curriculum that we're introducing and we and we couldn't have everybody have all those different technologies at the same time unless we do it the way we're doing it today um, in other words you couldn't take the CAD program home uh, to do what we do today um, in our systems so 
um, if it was on a regular PC or a laptop or, you know, iPad or anything like that. Um, we also are tending to look at more um, equipment that is higher end capacity than the simple, you know, Chromebook right. type mm -hmm. technology, which really can't handle a lot of the things we offer within our curriculum. Right. Um, so again, we don't want to limit what the kids can do um, in their process. And, and by having the technology the way our has been laid out, uh, we actually have the ability to manage those different things. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's, it, it's very important just to understand the magnitude of the number of computers that we're running. But, you know, we, we've shown to the ad count in the last round that we have about 1,800 to 2,000 computers that we're running in the district of 2,600 kids. So it, it, we're not far off here. And, and again, it, it's not really, that's why there's not really a fight for right. the technology. It's because they can literally sign up to take the whole lab over if they want, or they can have, you know, as, as uh, Dr. Mello said, bring in carts into their class. And they do that. And they, they're shared and they're moving around constantly. So um, at this point, I think we, our philosophy has worked so well, you know, well so far. But um, things will change as we move forward. So, sure. Thank Any you. other questions? Move on to objective the two. Next objective. Well, that second objective, I think we've hit on some of the things which really is yeah. the professional development, the tech mm -hmm. integration specialists, where mm -hmm. they're coaching embedded during the day with curriculum and really looking at how can we take it and as Allison said, move to not just where substitution that bottom of the CMR level, which is you know, if you're writing on chart on chart paper and then you're just taking it and you're doing a Word document, well, you're not really it's substitution we really want to get to those higher levels of redefinition and mm -hmm. things as she said you couldn't do before without having the technology so um, whether those are taking place on our PD days or during staff meetings or even just in grade level yep. kinds of um, PLCs Ms. Reed was just at the grade level meetings introducing some um, some new stuff that she had developed in Buzz for our kindergarten teachers for students to interact with. It was really impressive to see actually that she had created this content and that what kids could be doing with it was really amazing. We also just launched, uh, we have John Safier coming who wrote The Skillful Teacher. He's very well known in Massachusetts. Yep. He just wrote a new book called High Expectations Teaching and it ties in so much with our work on equity and achievement gaps and motivation. So he'll be coming in August. So. We were running out of days in the school year, so we launched a hybrid book study. So we had a face-to-face -face meeting, and then we used KidBlog, which is a platform that our students use. We used it as teachers so that we could keep the conversation going. It was really, it was fun, and it was fun to learn. And then we had our final face-to-face -face meeting, and we debriefed on, should it have been a Twitter chat? Did we like the KidBlog? What did we like about it? And those teachers now will go back and use that. Mm -hmm. It was actually Ms. Geffers who was the one who had used it, but now that was spread exponentially to the, um, to the group. In next January, the Professional Development Committee is proposing an EdCamp style of PD, which is known in the computer world. EdCamps are you go in and you're with an expert practitioner. So Mrs. Borges, for example, she's outstanding at using the, um, the quick assessments on Illuminate. She could host a session for an hour. Teachers will come in. They'll learn all of her expertise, and then they can go to something else for an hour. It's a real departure from our typical professional development. It involves a lot of choice, a lot of differentiation, and a lot of opportunities to learn about many things at once. So we're excited. That actually came as a joint venture between our PD committee and our district innovation team. So we're excited to give that a try as well. So anything else on objective two? Objective three, global information and communication, really working with our students to develop those skills and competencies to become um, safe, ethical, and productive members in today's global society. We talked a lot about what does your digital footprint look like, mm -hmm. anything you put online. Those conversations, it's not a one-time conversation. And it looks different at the elementary level. And again, at the middle school and high school, we've talked about, you know, it's your digital tattoo. It will stay with you. And, you know, it's your brand. You're branding yourself. So, again, it's a conversation that's taken place for many years, but it can't be had enough. No. And it, it really is an, is an important one. Um, There's a new opportunity at the high school for freshmen. Ms. Ciccone, our new tech integration specialist, and Ms. Barrett, who supports um, digital literacy in the library. They're doing a course with freshmen. I thought this was so fascinating about implicit bias that's baked into your Google search. Mm -hmm. So how, when you search for like what they gave an example of work appropriate hair, 
and the images or inappropriate hair that come up. They oh. might be from different ethnicities or different culture, and that doesn't mean it's inappropriate, but it's how it's coded. It's a machine. It's, it was made by humans, and yeah. so there's a human bias. And how do you then interpret that? That's powerful stuff mm -hmm. for kids who need to be using technology to make informed decisions. I mean, we all know about Wikipedia and how it can take you down a wayward path. Mm -hmm. So they've sort of taken it up a notch and really matched it with our work on equity and really and bias so that was exciting to me and that's something they're going to continue and spread further next year mm -hmm. and you know one of the goals is that speaking to leveraging the web and social media um, and for, to provide effective and consistent content delivery spreading that out outside of the school district you know one example the um, human trafficking summit that took place mm -hmm. it was our students that put together the PSA mm -hmm. for that it was our students that put together the advertisements and the flyers and those things and it it really is um, a, a way of using social media and a partnership of something else that was taking place but something that's you know a, a problem in the world but also it's it's a problem in to local areas mm -hmm. in the United States and towns and cities as well so continuing those partnerships whether it's with the Foxborough Cultural Council with our students our senior Inc there's so many different examples that continue to grow and I think that that's where some of the teaching and learning highlights are a great mm -hmm. way to showcase and that. to go back to Brent's point the project-based learning has really been led by um, Miss Geffers at the high school uh -huh. and uh, Miss Cardulo is also dabbling in that and that was a really for 11th grade English students and that's going to expand next year to 9th and 10th grade and thinking back to the global piece that we were talking about earlier I, I recall now looking at this mm -hmm. one of the project-based learning um, projects that they had was about the cause and effect of genocide so talking about making global Global connections it was very powerful for kids to learn about that um, Ms. Gemfers invited me to go speak to her uh, 11th grade English classes <laughs> as a school committee member a lawyer and a parent yes. about censorship and it was yes. a very interesting conversation but it, the, it was for me it, really cool to be part to be invited in to be part of the project-based mm -hmm. learning so it was you know, it was kind of cool anyway yeah. so but uh, even dr. Wozlewski's um, things going research on. course they had me yeah. come in for their presentations and the AP Sem. I think it was it was either AP Sem or AP research, research is going to be next year okay she so, hasn't talked okay that so then that's what it was yeah. but they presented on um, maybe having a service dog like with our SRO but it was a dog yeah. and make their argument their claim their evidence and their reasoning for it um, they had actually I think I saw four or five presentations yeah. felt bad for the other kids when all the golden retrievers came in the room it was a little <laughs> distracting for them to do their presentations they got a little upstaged but um, so cool love it very cool and then if it's okay with the committee to look at objectives four and five because we're really yeah. looking at relevant technology and accessibility and privacy mm -hmm. and we continue to in ensure that our current technology is relevant as we were talking before mm -hmm. through the CIP budget um, the refresh cycle looking at the labs versus mm -hmm. those carts that's something that we're constantly looking at as far as how it's going to best impact teaching and learning right. in, in the schools. And then again, the um, communication pieces, when we look at the, mm -hmm. the data information, what I talked about mm -hmm. before, the new things, whether it's the web presence, whether it's school messenger, whether it's attendance calling, whether it's the document secure delivery, um, any of those things are, are really ways that we continue mm -hmm. to try to enhance the communication in a way that is going to be for the end user effective. And just one last thing to think about where we've been and where we are now. When I first came, we looked at MCAS data a lot, and we looked at TestWiz, yep. and it was a very old-fashioned platform. Mm -hmm. Now in Illuminate, we can use the data literally two minutes after we administer the test, and not only does it give us sort of color-coded things, it forms groups for us, but it also shows us how did our low-income students do? How did our um, special education students do? How did our African-American students do? We can really track the achievement on both ends in a way that we've never been able to before. So that we can re be really intentional, uh, intentional about what we're doing. So any questions on any of those? Good stuff. I was going to say the, the, the great thing about technology plan it, it articulates so much that we're offering and doing and mm -hmm. supplying and putting out there and um, you guys have said it in your presentation that uh, 
the teachers embracing it and going after it is, is a critical piece of that puzzle. So, you know, you could, you can have a great plan that puts everything there, but if it's not access, if people don't put the extra time in. So, Absolutely. you know, we, sh we should make sure we thank the teachers for uh -huh. their, their willingness to learn because uh -huh. the teachers, a lot of their learning is on their own time. Yes. It's, it's you know, figuring out on their own with, with, with supports too. Yeah. But so it's, we had a teacher on the innovation team, and after she heard some, she's the one with the Eric Carl. She went right on Amazon and got herself a green screen. Yeah. I said, you know, you could have just used green paper. <laughs> 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 oh no, she, she had, had it in to two have two days it. though. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> That's a good it. point, though, Richard. We really yes. do have teachers who who are growing and learning right along with their students, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, Again, I'll say it again. I'm glad that we have the technology department that we have and have been able to give our teachers that tech support yes. in order that they don't have to start at ground zero right. to learn this, right. that they have, you know, people like Darlene Reed right there and, and Dan Ambrosio, Dan Ambrosio and Michelle Ciccone, absolutely. Excellent. All of our tech specialists are, are great and, and right there to say if a teacher says, hey, I want to do this, they're like, I'll show you. Yes. Yeah. It's and the wonderful. other piece to that, too, um, that it makes me think of is so MassQ mm -hmm. is the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents, mm -hmm. and they partner. The Q is the Computer User Educator. So MassQ, that, that conference, that, which is the state-led conference that's at Gillette here, we've continued to see an increase in the number of our teachers that are putting yes. in proposals yeah. to yes. present, cool. along with students, yes. right. Very cool. which to be able to take the risk in your classroom, but then to say, I'm going to go share with other educators from across the state. And as you remember, one of the shout outs for one of our retirees tonight, Miss Wainwright brought her kindergarten. I was just there. gonna say, all yes. grade levels, That's we right. had kindergarten. That's right, yeah. it was outstanding. Yeah. And That's I think awesome. you chaperoned. Yes, you did. <laughs> that <laughs> trip too, right? I did. Yes. <laughs> I did. Yeah. All hail flip grid. Yes, <laughs> That's what it was. I, I had a question about, um, related to your already robust data gathering efforts, uh, not to add more to it, but I do love the, uh, the ISTE scale the, the, and the, that you provide in the appendix there. Is that something that aspects of your staff or faculty, you know, kind of use for self-assessment or you use? I, it's, I just, I, I, I find it useful. Uh, and you've already I've heard you implementing the language as you're talking to us about the report, the substitute, you know, augmentation versus yes. substitution. Is that something that is actively used or could be used in terms of just, uh, I guess, teachers assessing where they are within their departments, grade levels, schools, so on and so forth? I think we can do a better job yes. with that. It's a conversation that we have, and it's a conversation that we had more, say, two years, three years ago sure. than what we have now. But the other that's piece so much to, going on now. Th that's right. And the other piece, too, is, you know, we looked for so many years for some kind of a technology self-assessment mm -hmm. to where do yes. I fall as mm -hmm. a teacher. And with technology changing so much, we couldn't find, like the T yeah. T set, which yeah. came through the Massachusetts Department of Education yeah, way back, <clears throat> that was one. But You can't get in front of it. You can't. And they don't have that one anymore. Right. So it really is the evidence comes to, well, what are we seeing in classrooms? Mm -hmm. What are principals seeing as they're observing and walking through classrooms? Actually, you've just given me a great idea to use this sort of um, to, for our lens through our innovation team to mm -hmm. sort of assess some of the things that we're doing and where we are and what we can try yeah. because that's, that's where we are as a group is seeing what are we trying, what's working, how can we scale the impact and get more people innovating through technology and global ideas so I think that would be a great way to do it and so. that's where it started was with that technology yep. steering committee when yes. we started identifying and what are how often are we just at the mm -hmm. substitution yes right? and when are we crossing that line up to redefinition and Amy won't say this but she went to every single school and did a staff meeting on the SAMR model mm -hmm. and taught everybody about it and got I'm that not, ball rolling I'm not surprised <laughs> it also I mean I would say it, it speaks to the question that was uh, discussed earlier and uh, that, that I believe you were answering very thoroughly, uh, Bill and others, um, about what drives the choice between um, adopting certain levels of technology versus going with what we have and, you know, and uh, at a certain point you could, I, w reframing your argument before about, you know, you don't go one-to-one -one with low-level technology if it's simply just going to be for the purpose of substitution, mm -hmm. um, you know, it actually has to be has to be worth it. Right. All right. 
Any other questions on the technology plan? We've never had these two plans reporting out in the same night, so thank you for bearing with us. And we well, actually, never will in, again. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of how well they marry with the, each other, I actually, I think it's a nice, yeah, very nice pairing. I, I, I would yeah. agree with that, yes. definitely. At the risk of getting things thrown at me by my other committee members. No. Well, we actually only have one more year that they would be reporting out because they will merge them as we, yeah. Oh, sure. Yep. Yes. But I think that also speaks to how much, how far we've come both in the strategic planning and with the technology planning that we are going to be able to merge them because so much has been done uh, in both areas. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it's very exciting that we will be able to merge the two yeah. down the road now and in the next iteration. And maybe some of our members will want to be on that committee yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> down and the road. Mr. Heyer was out of town. He was yeah, not able to be here this evening. Yeah. But so much of the work, yeah, you mentioned it before, yeah. in the technology yeah. department, mm -hmm. we just yeah, have good a people. fabulous technology department. Absolutely. Yes, thank you for saying that. I meant to say that he couldn't be here this evening. So hopefully we represented him well. I, you absolutely did. did. OK, so the next item on the agenda is continued discussion about the superintendent's evaluation. So I provided you with a lot of information at the last meeting. <laughs> did you? <laughs> no, bit. you did. And I've started meeting individually um, with members. Right. So I, my question would be if you have any other questions about, based on what I gave you before, um, or if there's any other information you'd like for me to provide you. I, I'm, I'm good at this time. Does anybody have any questions yeah. or need any other okay. information? Okay. All right. Sorry, Excellent. Um, and I know that Marilyn has her paperwork because I gave it to her myself. <laughs> so I'm sure she'll be in touch with you. And I think Chris said he was picking his up. We actually, we actually met today. Excellent. Fabulous. That's great. So we're moving forward with that. Um, all right. Then moving on, our next uh, item is acceptance of donations. A wonderful part of it. Yes, always a good part. Yay. So, um, do you want? Who would like to take this on? <laughs> Bill, Amy. Um, I'll, I'll do the first two donations. and let him do the third one here. Okay. Excellent. So the the first two I'll take one at a time. Is the first one is from the Foxborough Diamond Club, mm -hmm. which is to fund the assistant coach for two, two of them actually. Thank you um, for varsity baseball and our boosters do such. A, you know an extraordinary job of raising funds to support our students and they then support the assistant coaches based on um, how many kids th mm -hmm. that we have that are playing so that is for twenty five hundred dollars from the Foxborough Diamond Club to support two baseball assistant coaches right. it's a lot of fundraising right mm -hmm. there uh, would anybody like to make a motion to accept with gratitude this donation so moved. Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Four zero zero. Thank you to the Diamond Club. And now we'll move to softball, and to support two assistant coaches from the Foxborough High School softball boosters, a donation of one thousand dollars. Excellent. Also for two assistant coaches. Yeah. Great. Um, any other I'd move questions? to accept the softball boosters donation of a thousand dollars with gratitude with gratitude always with gratitude second that <laughs> all those in any further discussion all thank those you. in favor <laughs> four zero zero and thank you to the softball boosters Absolutely. All right. and the last one let mr. Yukna speak to it because it um, has a little bit more of some construction which is exciting <laughs> So the Taylor School PTO actually came to us um, a while back and they had an interest in advancing some of the playground structures out there. They do have a nice um, uh, area that they had donated quite a bit towards in the past and that yeah. fundraising had been done in the past and so on. But the, um, there's a structure in the back which is an old swing set um, is basically at the end of its useful life. Mm -hmm. And in that area, they, uh, they are the only elementary that doesn't have one of those climbing um, apparatus uh, netting systems that uh, give the kids a, a lot of opportunity to um, climb through and, and the physical activity with it um, mm. it's 
you know, the price that you're seeing here, the 20335 basically is for the unit itself, its installation, and obviously we also have to put um, handicap accessibility uh, matting and code uh, uh, walkways to it. Uh, at the same time, we as a school district will eliminate the uh, swing set and put in a new smaller swing set right next to it, mm -hmm. um, which is about 7,000 more. Uh, but this would really kind of complete mm -hmm. theirs, and it was a, a very nice donation on their side mm -hmm. oh, um, yeah. in, in obviously taking that uh, playground to another level. Mm -hmm. It's funny, I keep thinking of the playground at the Taylor School as the new playground, but that was actually installed when um, Jack was in second grade, so <laughs> it's not, a, not that new, not anymore. new anymore. And those swings in the back were old mm -hmm. when my kids were there. Yep. So. There, it is time for them to go, and this is a, a wonderful donation by the, the Taylor PTO. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Would you. anyone like to make a motion to accept the donation? Make a motion to accept the Taylor PTO's very generous donation with gratitude. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you, Taylor PTO. A lot of fundraising went into Ooh. that as well. Yeah. Yes. So generous. Oh yes, very. We are we are really lucky to have our parent organizations that we do. I mean, so many opportunities are provided to our children because so many parents are working hard on different um, endeavors throughout mm -hmm. the district. That's for sure. All right. So our next item up is uh, the policy revisions. We're all still awake, which is great. Um, we're only five minutes behind schedule. This is where so, it gets exciting. Yes. Well, I hope you're excited because you're on policy. <laughs> so <laughs> this, is, this is something nice. that we are hoping our policy committee can <laughs> jump on over the summer. Uh, Dr. Barros and I have talked about the, uh, the public participation part of it. Amy, do you want to um, I explain a little bit how this came about? You went to the program Sure. Last so they week. had a superintendent's briefing on this piece of school committee meetings, the public comment section, huh. and what they found in a particular case that was um, that took place recently, that there are some areas within the policy that need to be separated out. And so when we went back and looked at our policy, we indeed fall underneath that as well. And this is with MASC. They're looking to provide new guidance to districts based on this recent court case. You know, for, for an example, um, when we're looking at the comment section versus mm -hmm. what happens during a comment section versus what happens during the agenda right. of the item and separating mm -hmm. that out within the mm -hmm. policy. So we need to revisit that policy. Yeah. In defining what the role of the school committee is and in um, keeping remarks to, you know, matters that are under the school committee's right. actual purview. Uh, purview. Exactly. Um, so we wanted to bring this or, uh, up tonight so that our policy com subcommittee would be aware of it and hopefully we can have time to take a look at it maybe before our August meeting. We have a considerable amount of work already to do at our July meeting. So um, keeping that in mind, I know Amy has the, all the PowerPoint and the case information that um, perhaps we could provide um, Brent and Richard with that. Yes, I'll so get that those too. So that it would you know, inform their um, discussion. Good. But if you guys can get together and just find a, a good time when you can meet in the next few weeks and uh, you know, then we could have a, hopefully our first reading in August, if that works for you all. So, and then the homeless students is the other um, policy that needs tweaking. Yes, and really, um, this this one's an easier one. Mm -hmm. We have a liaison for homeless families, and then um, we need to have a liaison for foster families for it to be two separate policies. Okay. Right now, we have it combined in one policy. So that one really is separating that out two to two. Yep. Um, I can say that our liaison to foster families or to homeless families, it's Kim McDowell, who mm -hmm. um, is also our out of district coordinator. She would end up being the liaison to both because there's so many wraparound services and working with families, right. but we need two separate mm -hmm. policies to delineate that. Makes sense. So um, if you could discuss that at the same time, hopefully we can yep. address both of these policies. Can you? Um, issues. Who else is part of that? You, you and, Richard. and Richard. And then Amy and, and Bill usually sit in on our policy subcommittee meetings. They are posted meetings, um, and one of you will hopefully take you know brief minutes of them to provide to the public as needed. Yes. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions? No. All right. 
So we can look, you know, at your schedules for this summer. If when would be a good time, and set up a date for yeah. that. We just got to post the meeting. So yeah, you just coordinate with e each other, yeah. and, and uh, just wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page and knew what was coming up. So okay. More things. All right. We are back on schedule. It's nine fifteen, and we're at other matters. <clears throat> Does anyone have any other matters? Dr. Bardos, would you like to begin? Sure. So the last day of school is tomorrow, oh. in case anybody wasn't aware. <laughs> um, I will say that the weather has really cooperated mm -hmm. when we think yeah. about the end of school and if it starts to get hot. Mm -hmm. Because our buildings, they're yeah. not, other than the Ahern, really, mm -hmm. they're not air conditioned. Yeah. And um, it can make learning in an, in an environment a little bit of a, a struggle. Mm -hmm. Taking and exams. Um, <laughs> taking exams and all of that. So we've been really, really fortunate. Yeah. That part's been nice. And so I feel like that um, we're having a, a great end to the school year. And mm -hmm. we're excited for students to be able to move up. We have our move up ceremony or our um, celebration at the Ahern tomorrow for our eighth graders. Always huge, big event. And just to see them knowing they're going to high school, mm -hmm. that's, that's mm -hmm. exciting. Um, and then we've had a, a number of different, you know, activities and things mm -hmm. at the elementary levels as well. And they're, especially our fourth graders, excited moving to the Ahern. And there's just been so many different transition mm -hmm. opportunities that have taken place. So I, I just, it, it just makes you proud um, with what the teachers and the administrators in each of the buildings do to make sure a welcoming environment is in place for our students. I so, agree. absolutely. Anyway, um, just. You know, everybody to have a safe summer. Remember to read. Remember to do some math. Remember to explore and ask questions and ponder and wonder and all of those things. But to have a, a safe summer. Okay. Brent, do you have anything you'd like to add? No. <clears throat> Richard? Nothing. Rob? Uh, I want to say good luck to the girls lacrosse team tomorrow. Yes, they won first, thank you. They won their first regional title, right? Very excited, yeah. Tomorrow at Babson, 5 o'clock, right. is what I understand That's the right. time is. So good luck to them yeah. tomorrow night at 5. Yes. Very exciting. Very good. So. Very good. Allison. That's what I was going to say, but I will also add that we are having our um, Summer Professional Development Institute next week here hosted at the Ahern with many districts from all over the Commonwealth. So be a lot of traffic at the Ahern on mm -hmm. those days. All right. We're excited. Excellent. Yes. Bill, anything to add? Uh, <laughs> just closing out the year, obviously, at this point, and so um, we won't know for another couple of days exactly what we have left for funding, but we have a few small mm -hmm. projects that we're looking at doing. It's just not going to be as busy a year as we've had in the past, so, uh, but uh, should be uh, should be still some things we can try to accomplish with a few funds we might have. Excellent. Um, Joe, do you have something you'd like to add? Um, a question for Mr. Yukna and just a question to let the committee know. What, Mr. Yukna, when you said a couple small projects, what do you mean, like the Taylor School Playground? Yeah, that, that's one of them. But, it, it, you know, we have a couple things relative to um, even out at the ta uh, borough school with uh, the sewer lines and stuff like that. that we sewer lines, Taylor School Playground, and then any other you were thinking of this summer? Not really. I'm just, you know, but we do have normal expenses within the buildings, uh, you know, as far as doing, you know, uh, maybe, you know, floor repair. Uh, we have what, looking at something at the IGO for the areas that, that the floor is not stained down well. So, again, depending on what money we have, uh, will depend on which projects we can go after. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Yukna. And then the other thing I wanted to let the committee know that the girls lacrosse is playing in the Eastern Mass Final yes. against Cohasset right. tomorrow at 5 o'clock p.m. at Babson College in Boston Wellesley area. We wish them very good luck. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you Joe. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. Well, I, I actually have nothing to add. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, oh, Janet. Oh, Janet. Yes. Did you want to talk about the retreat or no? Oh, just a reminder that on July 15th right. is our next meeting and that we have um, Dorothy Presser from MASC. So you have executive yeah. session 5 to 5.30 right. and she'll be there 5.30 to 7.30. It'll be great. I'm glad she's coming. It'll be a great opportunity for our new members and our kind of new members to ask any questions about school committee procedure. It'll be a great opportunity for Bevy and myself to get a refresher on some things and uh, go over 
you know, things like that recent court case um, and public participation mm -hmm. and all that. So um, I'm really glad that you have arranged for her to come and I'm excited to talk to everybody about our upcoming goals for the next school year. So it should be a good meeting and we should start early and Janet always gets us some sandwiches and snacks for the meeting. So Yay. any meeting is always made better by snacks. So <laughs> just so you know, you can come hungry. All right. Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn if we're... I would, in fact. Okay. Should I make a motion? <laughs> yes. I move to adjourn. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of adjourning? Good night, everybody. Thank Good you. Night. Thank you.